Really excited. Hello, County Councilman Morell. You know, I may just uh, check in with you because I haven't heard from County in a while, and I know we're going to buy a little time for Dr. Child Flores. So um, welcome, and let's, why don't you provide an update for us? I <laughs> uh, look forward to that. So yeah, we've been uh, in a total blackout for the last month. So we'll give you an update on our uh, exciting budget process. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I think I'd rather go to Boise and hang out with the chamber. You know, we missed you. That was a great time. That city to city tour that we do um, has in so many ways, uh, I guess, pokes the bear a little bit when you get to bring people that you're trying to message all the great things other cities are doing. And, and instead of us being the one to kind of constantly keep pushing in in front of people, they get to just see for themselves, talk to their counterparts, glean a lot of insight. It, it, it's just such a valuable trip. I hope we schedule it at a time that works for more of you um, on the county side as well. Yeah. No, that, that that was great seeing that. I've I've always believed that there's a lot of great ideas out there, and they don't always come from us. So you know, if we can tap into other people's innovation, uh, I, I think it makes us a lot better. So anyway, okay, looking forward to uh, the meeting, and uh, so I'll pipe down here. Yep, you bet. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, so, Lana, maybe I'll, uh, uh, Ryan's here. Hi, Ryan. I thought we were on sabbatical. <laughs> He's checking in with us um, now in November on Mondays uh, and Tuesdays, so. Okay, okay. Well, why don't, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, hear from either of you, however that's going to work for both of you. Um, but yeah, how, how are we doing in summer? What kinds of things are going on? We're doing good. And I'm, I'm, I'm in my, my little world here, so I don't have a lot of government affairs themed, um, updates, but, um, as far as, as, as what I'm working on, um, we are working on utility box wraps, finally going to get some of those done in Sumner. So we should be seeing those at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to try to do a few of those uh, a year. And then um, we're getting ready for um, the bridge lighting. We just went and tested the lights last night. So the old canneries bridge lighting is on Saturday, the 25th. Okay. Um, and then we have the Santa Parade on Saturday, December 2nd here at three o'clock in Sumner. So nice. that's kind of our end of the year events. And when you say the utility wrapping, what what are you referring to? Um, the traffic wrap boxes that you see that have the art on them. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ryan, I it's good to see you. <laughs> hey, it's good to be here. So I'm coming, uh, I'm zooming in from Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the road. But uh yeah, we are um and I'm checking in one one day a week is my plan here in November. So that's why you you see me on, even though I'm on something of a sabbatical. Can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. Then it's working. Um, yeah, do you want a little bit of an update on what we're doing in terms of council stuff? I'm barely uh, barely up to date on it, but a um, couple things going on. One is the council is looking at, um, we, have the, we have the large White River Restoration Project that we're doing in the North End. And Burlington Northern Santa Fe has backed out of our deal, which is good and bad. Uh, good because it actually creates more area for restoration. They were going to do a 10-track siding yard that was going to take up over 11 acres. And so that can go back into uh, a restoration. Um, and they also helped us get the permits through. So the bad part is we have to go back and amend the permits since they're no longer part of it. And it's also going to cost another $7 million dollars. Uh, for the, the restoration. So the council is taking a look at, at those changes to agreements with BNSF and agreements with our, our, our sale actually of the, uh, of the golf course property to the north. Um, the council also voted to demolish the Ryan house or remove it um, because it's gonna cost, they had estimates of 2 million 
we're thinking it's going to be more than that, um, which is an unfortunate circumstance, tough decision. Uh, a lot of people in the community concerned about that decision. So we are, I don't know what all the details are, honestly, but I know, I think we're dealing with at least one um, court challenge. So, uh, so we're trying to, trying to work with that. And then um, last night, the council approved the annual increase to our ad valorem uh, property tax increase. Uh, they allowed 1%. Um, and so, I know that's going on as well. And I feel like I'm missing, I know I'm missing some things because I haven't been uh, around in too much detail. So, but we've got, uh, oh, the other thing they're looking at that does affect what I, one of my projects is the uh, MIC transit that we have going, the pilot project. Uh, we've been running that for 10 months and ridership has been steadily increasing. We had, we had almost, Almost 100 riders in the month of October. The trust company is actually using it quite heavily. And so we are working with, we've applied to Pierce County for funding for 2024. So we're hoping to be able to continue to fund that pilot project and see kind of what ultimately it's going to, um, how it's going to pan out. So that's another thing we've been working on. And we also have a draft that's going to be out for too long for our parks. Well, it's out kind of now, but it's Still a pretty rough draft for our parks and trail plan update. Council is going to be reviewing that at the next study session. So we've got plenty going on. I, I'd say you're pretty fairly plugged in for a sabbatical. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, anyhow, I don't know if it's the right thing to be doing or not, but <laughs> I am, uh, anyhow. I'll let you know when, I, when I'll let you know when I get back to work in the office on the 27th of November if, if it really worked out or not. <laughs> uh, well, what a wonderful opportunity uh, to have this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's been pretty cool. I'll tell you that. That's great. Well, thank you very much for the updates there. Um, any questions from our folks down in Sumner? Okay, well, let's see if we can uh, maybe pop into Puyallup. Meredith, are you in a position where you're able to provide an update? I see Dr. Tyle Flores is logging on too, but we'll hear our update from Puyallup and give her a chance to get settled. There you are, beautiful. If you are ready, if you are ready, we can go ahead and introduce you and um, you know to some of these folks. I, I'm imagining many of you have had an opportunity to meet Dr. Tyle Flores. Uh, she was one of our keynote speakers at our Women in Business Breakfast, so a lot of us got to meet her there, and she's, you know, putting herself out in the community, uh, but let's uh, go ahead and let you introduce yourself, and uh, love to hear what kinds of updates and great things are happening in Pierce College now, and maybe even a little bit of casting a vision of, of some things you're moving towards. Good morning, all. Thank you, Tara. Sorry uh, that I was a little late. Um, still getting used to traffic on the side. <laughs> um, for those who haven't met me, um, I'm a um, Eastern Washington native, so just adjusting. Um, just celebrated five months at Pierce Puyallup, and this is my first time um, working on this side of the mountains. So getting used to um, not um, being on time, apparently. So um, I, I'm trying to work on that. I'm working hard at that. So again, good morning. Um, thanks for having me and allow me just to chat with you all this morning. Um, for those um, who um, I haven't met, just a little background. As I mentioned, I spent most of my professional career prior to um, Pierce College on the east side of the mountains. Um, had the honor to work at a variety of, of um, institutions community colleges, as well as um, four-year institutions. So more recently, I was at Wenatchee Valley College, serving as a vice president of student services. And prior to that, I'd spent 21 years at Washington State University in, in Pullman. Um, had a really great, great time in Pullman. Go, go Cougs, for those who might be in the room. <laughs> 
um, am part of that, Eastern Washington University, and then um, started my career, what turned out to be my career in higher ed at Big Bend Community College. I'm a Central Washington native, Quincy, Washington, so grew up amidst some um, agriculture um, all around me, and um, now I'm in the big city, as my, my folks would think, but it's like, oh no, QLF's not that big. Um, so glad to be here. Um, so serving as um, Pierce College's president, um, Puyallup president. So um, one of the reasons I'm a little late is that I'm at um, the Fort Stillicum campus in Lakewood, Washington. And so didn't build in enough time to get here by eight. But um, for those who aren't familiar, Pierce College is um, a district um, in terms of institution, community and technical college. Um, we have 34 in the state of Washington and Pierce um, has two campuses, Lakewood here at Fort Stillicum and then um, in Puyallup. And so really feel fortunate to be able to live and work um, in, in my town, Puyallup now. And so a um, lot of it, lots been happening in the last five months since I started a lot of good work prior to me coming. Um, Pierce um, has received, for those who may not know, um, for many years, national recognition for the work we're doing around student success. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been fortunate to also along the way build um, um, to buildings um, essentially to support the work that we're doing in, in meeting local um, needs, um, our community needs here in Lakewood as well as Puyallup. For those who haven't been on at our campus at, in Puyallup, um, we have a new building coming up. Um, it is the science building and so we're really eager um, to um, fill that beautiful new building um, and we will looking like um, if all things go accordingly, it will be ready by fall, um, next fall, um, 2024. And so um, we are engaging in as an institution um, with many new, um, um, I guess, approaches to the work in terms of we have a new chancellor, um, I'm new to the leadership team, as well as um, many other um, um, what we call um, E-team, exec, executive team. So Julie Ch um, White, some of you may have met her, but eager to, she's very eager to, um, she's the chancellor and CEO of Pierce District. And so she's eager to meet folks as well in Puyallup. Prior to that, Julie was at Fort Silicon um, she was president here at this campus and so really hasn't met too many people uh, in on the uh, Puyallup and, and is eager to make those um, those connections. So she and I will be um, doing that um, together at some times and other times I'll, I'll be, of course, um, um, there more than she does. She kind of splits her time. We have several um several staff that do that because of what we, how we operate as a, as a district. So um, the type of work that I'm engaging in um, is of course um, community, um, what we're calling community vibrancy. It's, it's really um, focusing on what are our community needs, but being a much more thoughtful, intentional partner in that process. Um, Tara and I met this summer and it's been wonderful because she's opened up a whole um, um, new app. And, and I know it's always existed, but for me, it was very exciting to be able to be a part of the work that the chamber's involved in and, and support the chamber. But then of course, um, every one of you in this room. And so really eager to make those connections. Um, the other thing that we're focusing on is identifying communities that we may not have um, um, had real significant relationships for some time. And so I'll be working um, with 
um, engaging our tribal partners. Um, that's I have some background in that area. And so um, making connections with the Puyallup, um, Nisqually, and to some degree, the Muckleshoot as well, kind of again, looking at our district and um, who resides in our district in terms of tribal um, nations. So I'm really excited to do that work as well. Um, and then again, just, um, you know, trying to learn as much as I can about the community, but as and and Pierce College, and of course, welcome um, your thoughts and how I can be, how we, I should say, can be better partners. Um, for the future, we are like many, as I'm sure the conversation this morning is about, um, kind of looking to see what are what will happen on the hill this this um, this um, session, and eager to continue what you know we've been receiving funding for from the state. Um, we don't have any capital projects. That's always, I mean, we have one in, in of course, in the works um, in Puyallup, but um, we're really you know, honing in on what, what we'll need to support students um, in the future. Um, we are, as many other institutions in the state of Washington, experiencing um, enrollment um, challenges, but really, really excited to share that we're seeing that that change, that trajectory is going back up again. Um, and so we are pleased that we're, we're going to be able to um, again, support students, but then look to also some growth in that area. So I'll stop there. I feel like I've been talking for a little too long. So. <laughs> no, thank you for that overview. Definitely. Um, we're, you know, we recognize Pierce College definitely as an asset, but not all of us know all that you're engaged with. So that's helpful. And to give some context to, um, you know, how there has been a change in leadership, not just in your role and really across the boards chancellors and presidents in both. Um, so that's that's great. Uh, any questions for uh, Dr. Chaya Flores? You're, you must have been pretty thorough there. <laughs> that is okay, or it's too early in the morning. Uh, that, I'm okay with that. Well, we all like just the zone. <laughs> um, I have a question for you. So we have uh, launched our Chamber Foundation, and one of our first initiatives that seems to be rising very quickly to the top is a Chamber Career Academy, where we will be engaging students in high school, um, kind of opening up pathways for them to consider working in you know, skilled labor fields. Uh, one of the things that we're doing as we're developing this curriculum with the school district is trying to identify trends in um, you know, what is our workforce, what are the gaps in employment in the next you know, few years, five years, 10 years, so that as we're um, creating these sort of summer camp apprenticeship kinds of opportunities uh, that we're steering people to those sectors, if we're really trying to be good stewards and fill a really, you know, good need, um, you know, right now with with every open job and every able body, you, you know, if it was to be filled, we'd still fall short thirty percent. Um, so, you know, really looking at how how do we steer kids and and, and create a vernacular where they're talking about these other opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, what what kind of data might you have on what industries we should be? potentially partnering with? Um, great, great question, Tara. And thank you for thinking um, and contributing to, to that work because we are engaged in that. Um, we monitor that pretty closely. Um, our, uh, what we call our workforce and development area um, works really closely with industry, both in Puyallup and Lakewood. Um, and we're also looking at state trends as well as many of you, uh, particularly if you're from Puyallup, I hear it's it's grown quite a bit, um, and there seem there is more growth coming. So trying to think ahead and and also plan for that um, ten plus twenty year down the road. We know that healthcare um, is still a growing um, area um, in terms of jobs and needs there, um, and I know. You know, we um, in Pierce Puyallup have 
our nursing program and work really closely with our, our healthcare partners to um, um, help with building out that um, pipeline. Um, we also work really closely with the school districts um, as well as um, have many students who participate in what we call Running Start. Um, so there are opportunities to, ex we're already exposing students to some degree, but would be great to build that out um, even further, particularly if you're reaching, if this program ends up reaching students who may not have, may not be participating in Running Start. Mm -hmm. um, Bethel School District is a partner, um, um, of course, with Pierce, and they're developing out, um, uh, I'm trying to describe it, but, um, you know, because of transportation needs, and I'd say that's another area <laughs> in our side of um, Pierce County, um, they're, they're actually building an academy there at, at Bethel, um, Bethel High School, um, where we are as a partner helping um, to deliver curriculum. And there's interest in, um, again, career focused um, um, and not just a traditional, let's say four year pathway. And so I make sure Tara, if we haven't, or if you haven't yet connected with Bethel High School, that might be a really great, um, um, just what they're they're also seeing or, or um, identifying. So yeah, would love to you know ident help with that and um, connect and figure out how and where. I know that cybersecurity is also an area we're um, trying to meet in terms of um, increased demand in that space. Um, for those who don't know, we we work really closely with JBLM. We have a we, we have a campus as well. I, I should have mentioned that it's not only Lakewood and here at Puyallup, but JBLM as well. So, and we find that um, that also um, extends out. It doesn't only just stay um, here at this campus. Um, we have many students also. Um, enrolling in, in Puyallup. So, um, but yes, I'd love to give you what we have and, and I, um, I'm still learning, but um, I know, I know the people to go to um, and definitely give you what we, what we're identifying as those, those immediate, but then more longer term needs. Great. And I'll uh, be sure to extend a few invitations to you at some of our foundation board meetings, just to kind of, as we're still brainstorming the curriculum and program, I will go ahead and take advantage of the opportunity to share um, what is going to be, <clears throat> let's see if this pops up right. Uh, this particular event uh, on Wednesday, November 15th is officially a bit of a kickoff, if you will, to talk about the foundation and particularly this Chamber Career Academy it's also served yeah. as an initial fundraiser. Um, so you can see um, it's going to be at Meridian Cafe. Okay. And uh, we'll have a local artist where he'll be performing as a live jukebox. So you pay to play the songs you want to hear. Uh, we've done this before. But again, that kind of helps serve as a, a bit of a seed money, if you will, to get the foundation going. But we're really excited <coughs> to have um, folks from Master Builders Association on our board. Um, Chris Sig, who is with the CTE program at Puyallup School District, is on our board. So lots yeah. of very engaged and relevant partners. Excuse me, I'm losing my way. <clears throat> um, and so in this initial stage, would be great to also uh, include you. So here's one more event I'm inviting you to. <laughs> Thank you, Tara. And everybody else on the call. I hope you pop in and learn a little bit more about the, the program. It's a lot more robust than I've gone into right now um, with mentorship aspects as well, where kids are gonna be getting school credit as we partner uh, them with different uh, mentors in the in our community, in our chamber community. That's amazing, that's great. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. All right, any other questions for Dr. Flores? I don't have any questions. Have you met before? No, actually, I'm not. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome Thank to you. Pierce County. Yeah. So, looking forward to 
engaging with uh, Pierce Community College. Always uh, enjoy uh, being invited out to the campuses and seeing the good work that you do. So looking forward to you carrying on that excellent reputation. And yeah. uh, hopefully we'll meet in the near future here. Look forward to it. Thank you. Yeah, well, and, and because some of this, again, I'll take advantage, since we have a little bit of time here, I'll take advantage of going around the room just for introductions, just from the standpoint, again, who, who's your audience? You haven't had a chance to meet everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would love to be putting at least a name and or face if you feel your face is worthy of popping up, folks, all my folks that are off camera right now. <laughs> but we have some board members. We've got um, you know, folks from MultiCare, uh, Puget Sound Energy, our Port of Tacoma. So definitely potentially some names and faces I hope that we'll circle around to you at some point. Um, have you met Ryan Windish yet from City of Sumner? I'm, hello, Ryan. I'm not sure if I, I've met some folks, um, but I don't recognize you. Um, so glad to meet you. So from Sumner. Yes, good to meet you. Look forward to working with you on whatever projects that we uh, cross paths on. Yeah. Okay. Thank He's you. Community development space. Um, just a great okay. Time. Um, Paul Green, you want to introduce yourself, former board member and Azure Green Consultants? Uh, no thoughts, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Sean. Sorry about that. I was a little slow. Uh, good morning, Sean Egan. I'm the Government Affairs Director for the Port of Tacoma. Nice to meet you, Sean. I'll pop in on back on an update with you, Sean, in a little bit here. And I know you've met a Meredith, I assume. Not yet, actually. No. So yeah. I am the economic development manager for the city of Puyallup. And so okay. it's nice to you. You've um, been on my list, but I know we've both been busy. And I uh, had asked, you know, your interim staff, and they were all very excited about your arrival. So welcome. Nice to meet you, Meredith. I met some of your colleagues. Um, been, the city has been really um, welcoming, and um, we had a really great uh, evening at, at Piers, a celebration, and looking forward to making that bigger and better next year. So I look forward to meeting you. Yeah, you or, too. I, and I'm, and I'm looking for the, uh, the STEM building opening. I, uh, I've been taking my 15-year-old up to your campus for driving lessons because it's an ideal place on a weekend mm -hmm. for <laughs> mm -hmm roads but not hit anything <laughs> so it, occasional wildlife but you know just be careful <laughs> thank you diana good morning good morning thank you for sharing all that information that was awesome we're really happy to have you on our neck of the woods down here so welcome thank you diana uh, Diana and her husband have Fitness Quest, and they have Daffodil Bowl, very iconic Daffodil Bowl, and she is also serving currently on our directors for the chamber. Great to meet you, Diana. I've heard of Daffodil Bowl, but I would, yeah, so love to hear more about that one day. Absolutely. I'll take you bowling. We'll go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grace. Well, thank you all. I actually double booked this morning. So right. not only right. late, but I'm going to exit here pretty soon. It, it was a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you in the community. Awesome. And please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to, to again, make connection and support your work um, as well. However, however we can. Thank you. Appreciate you coming this morning. We'll see you at Forks and Corks on Saturday, uh, Friday night. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, Meredith, are we able to hear an update from the city of Puyallup? Absolutely. Um, so let's see. So, you know, first and foremost, today is election day. Um, we're looking forward to welcoming some new council members. We have a couple of council members who are um, leaving their terms at the end of the year and um, a few others who are running as well for re-election. So um, we're really excited about that and um, very curious to see how the public safety building measure does. Um, so keeping our fingers crossed that, you know, it doesn't miss by 0.3 votes or whatever it was in the first go round. 
Um, and so that will be interesting to watch, you know, what the community says about both of those efforts. Um, let's see, downtown projects. So um, our parklets just got pulled for the winter. Um, they continue to be a pretty popular <clears throat> item for restaurants. Um, and I know a number of our community members love them. About a week before <laughs> they were scheduled to be pulled, the one at Wicked Pie Pizza got hit. Um, so uh, that's that was kind of interesting. It was the first time that one had been um, in an accident during the day. There was a car pulling out and another car hit it, hit the car pulling out of a parking space. And then they both kind of careened into it. But it is a testament to um, the city of Sumner's original plan and then our public works team's execution. The parklet was not really damaged at all. It scooted itself around on the street a little bit, um, but did quite well. Came and got picked up and they had to re-weld one piece back together again. Um, let's see, our Meeker Festival Street. Um, we are in conceptual design for that right now. Uh, we've done a number of community outreach on that. There's actually a uh, thing open right now for public comment on that. We're just kind of looking for the community's thoughts on it, what they would like to see there, any amenities that they might like to see, the types of programming that we might want to design to support there. So I encourage everybody to take that survey. Um, our Wayfinding and Gateway project is underway. So that will be downtown wayfinding signage and also sort of the uh, the gateway signage, the entrance points into the downtown core so that you know that you're in downtown Puyallup. Uh, we had a great meeting with some of our uh, sort of primary community members as part of that effort last week uh, to receive some feedback and start talking about the way it might look, uh, how it might function, how we do things like connect the fair and the main shopping and dining core downtown better together. Uh, we also have a civic core lighting project that is underway. Fingers crossed, um, the lights will be installed and will be part of uh, the tree lighting ceremony that will be that first weekend in December along with the Santa parade. Uh, so you'll be seeing new lights going up around um, the tops of City Hall, the library, the pavilion, the stage, the new bathrooms uh, in Pioneer Park. And those will be able to be changed based on the season or, you know, different color palettes um, for different types of things. Uh, beyond that, let's see, our 2024 comp plan um, is underway. We had the first of the meetings with the community advisory group, uh, and that's kind of picking up speed right now. So uh, there will be many opportunities to be engaged in that process, and I highly encourage our business community to uh, to you know engage at the points where you are able, because it is very important. You know, this is really setting the vision of what our city is going to become, you know, how we're going to grow and where we want to grow. And it will help dictate things like where we want to see housing growth and multifamily development and where we want to see more businesses and how we might want to support that better. So it's quite important. And then and finally, um, just a little bit of news, we're going to have um, a transition in the Department of Planning and Development Services. Um, so Jeff Wilson just um, submitted his resignation. So his last day will be January 31st. Uh, and um, he'll be in City Hall and through the end of December. Um, and then there'll be about a month of overlap. And um, Steve has selected me to be the interim director of that department. So starting January 1, I'm going to be moving into that role. We're going to do a six-month interim position and see if it's a good fit for me and for the team. Um, so a lot of change. I think it's very exciting. Um, I think everybody kind of acknowledged that it was time for a change. But there you go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm so happy for you and happy for our community. That's fantastic. That's great. Thank you. That's great. And Ryan, I think I will be hitting you up a lot. <laughs> so I'm happy that you'll be back full time in December so that I can start uh, picking your brain some more. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Meredith. That's that's awesome. Well deserved. Yeah. 
Thank you. I love it. You've been serving on our economic development committee um, for a couple of years now. So um, you know exactly what those pain points are for the business community and are just such a, a great holistic thinker um, and, and a great process person. That's really exciting. Really excited for you. Well, thank you. All right. Any questions for Meredith? Well, thank you, as always, a very thorough update and, and great to get some insight on what's happening there on, on all fronts. That's wonderful. Do we have a date for the Santa Parade that you're aware of? I was just trying to look it up. Yeah, it is that first Saturday. I'll look up the actual date in just a second and put it in the chat. It, it's December 2nd. Oh, it's thank you. <laughs> Sumner. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Hey, Sean, do you have anything exciting happening at the port here? Absolutely nothing exciting going on. <laughs> um, so a couple things just to note. Uh, one is, and I think I've, we've, I've talked about this before, but um, we are continuing to do our um, preparation for the port's new maritime center, which would be located on the Fiat Foss waterway. Um, that facility is going to be the combination of a new administration building for the port. It will be a maritime skill center that will be done in partnership with the Tacoma School District. And I would emphasize would be available for students form throughout Pierce County, not just Tacoma. And then there's also gonna be some public amenities. We just entered into a second interlocal agreement with the Tacoma uh, Public Schools to kind of move to the next phase of development. We've got architects that have been retained. We've got a public advisory group that is helping to be able to provide input because we really want to make sure that this public merit, that this maritime center is not just simply a place for where we work, but we want to make sure that it's truly accessible to the community. So hopefully we're going to have some really cool input into that. Um, as that moves along. Um, second thing, uh, in addition to helping to make investments in workforce development, um, we always continue to try to demonstrate environmental leadership as a port, um, and that comes in a variety of different ways, one of which is just continuing to reinvest in the tight flats um, in terms of the green environment. Uh, a lot of times people think that there's no trees down on the tight flats, but in fact, if you spend a little bit of time driving around, you'll actually see there may be a little bit more than you anticipate. And we're going to be um, planting even more coming up later this month. We've got a, a, a volunteer tree planting coming up on November 18th. I'm going to plop some details into the chat in case anybody wants to uh, participate in that. We would always welcome support in that effort. Uh, but this is, again, some of the things that we do just to try to make sure we're leaving the planet just a little bit better than when we inherited it. And then in the meantime, we remain very busy on the marine cargo front, um, continuing to make sure that all of our customers are being served, no matter what the challenges are. And I think I will leave it at that and happy to answer any questions people might have. Great. Thanks for that link there. Any questions for Sean? Sean, uh, I had a question. This is Ryan from Sumner. Um, it, how, so it's staying busy. So is there any any? I mean, where we is it a trajectory of of increasing busyness or staying level or a slight decrease in terms of um, port it, activity? It, yeah, it depends on the particular line of business that you're looking at. Autos, our auto line of business is actually very healthy and is continuing to show an upward trend. So we are very active in that space. Um, we have also been very active in terms of serving the U.S. military. We have seen an increase in the volume that we have been handling in terms of military cargo. Um, our containerized cargo, however, continues to be in a slump. Um, it, part of it is that now that people have, now that the pandemic is basically over and people are now returning to a you know, normal life, they're no longer buying things or as many things as they did during the pandemic. Now they are using their disposable income to on experiences. So again, people are going back to restaurants, going out to eat, going on vacation. And so the consumption of things has gone down. And so as a result, you have seen a drop in cargo volumes. We're just not buying as much stuff as we were during the pandemic. Um, in addition to that, we still have, unfortunately, some... Um, 
lingering heartburn from the labor contract. Um, folks may recall that um, Longshore for the West Coast were negotiating a new labor contract that took longer than scheduled. And whenever there is uncertainty, our customers look for alternative gateways because they just don't want to take a chance that a labor disruption might end up, you know, might end up getting their cargo stuck someplace. Uh, and so on the containerized cargo side of things, we have actually seen our volumes are down. We are working very, very hard to try and um, explore new markets and kind of claw some of that cargo back. Any other questions? So, Sean, I had a quick question. Um, the last time that I was down in the port, maybe with the EDB a month ago or so, or so um, there were cars kind of stacked up everywhere. And I've noticed we still have a lot of car carriers that seem to be anchoring out. How is the, you know, cars are a big deal in our city and in our neighboring cities from a, you know, sales tax standpoint. I What's going on with the uh, car shipping? shipping in and out well i guess in none of them are shipping out um and are they all still sort of stacked up how is that going yeah we're making progress in that particular area so i think during the pandemic i think many of us were familiar with sort of the supply chain backlogs that we were seeing around containerized cargo that part's been resolved and as i mentioned we actually have have uh, excess capacity on our containerized cargo we're now seeing some backlogs now taking place on the auto side of things. Now, the good news is that we are working through that and that backlog is beginning to decrease. Um, that backlog is due to a variety of different circumstances. Uh, part of it is that we've been able to attract new business. So uh, for example, as many folks may realize, Kia and Hyundai are owned by the same larger corporate conglomerate. Um, and but for a long period of time, Kias were coming through in Tacoma, Hyundai's were going through in uh, the port of Portland. The corporate basically said, "We're tired of calling on two gateways. We want to call on one gateway." And we were successful enough to be able to win the business and bring Hyundai's in. So now all of a sudden, we've got a new line of business. We've been able to get um, General Motors is now starting to move Buicks through the gateway. So again, attracting new business. But now that means, of course, you're now having to try and get all that volume through. In addition to that, you have, again, when you go back to the pandemic, we saw a challenge around chips, microchips, and that was in, impacting the production of automobiles. Well, that has been sort of being resolved. And now all of a sudden, there's this massive surge of automobiles suddenly coming online as well. So those are some of the different factors that have contributed to the problem. Um, we've been slowly chipping away. Now, I think we tend to have maybe one vessel at anchor at a given time on the auto carrier side of things. So we're making progress. We've got a little bit more work to do, but we're we're trending in the right direction. So thanks for asking, Meredith. Yeah, thank you. And as long as, you know, we sell a lot of them in Puyallup, it's all good. <laughs> We had a we had a fun time at our board retreat a week and a half ago uh, with Luke Corum sharing that cars are less in Puyallup whole sort of slogan and and how it came to be and it's yeah it's pretty cool it definitely it definitely worked. <laughs> All right, any other questions from anyone? Lauren Adler, I, hey, I know you're off camera, but. Uh, you know, election day today, and you are running unopposed. So for those who are not aware, um, maybe Lauren, you can just uh, do a quick little introduction and talk about some of the things that are going to be important for you uh, when you take office in January. Well, thanks, Tara. Um, again, I apologize for not being on video, but I promise that all of you will be tired of seeing my face soon enough. Um, <laughs> And I'm sure some of you have already been tired of seeing my face over the last many years. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very humbled and grateful to be running unopposed. Um, you know, I am a third generation Puyallup resident. I look at this um, screen here and see a lot of friends. I see a neighbor who lives down the hall from me, Mr. Green. Um, and then many of you that I worked alongside with when I um, was a senior advisor to former Congressman Denny Heck. Um, and I'm just looking forward to joining the council to um, focus on economic development, public safety, and you know, being a leader that shows up and listens. 
um, and really being an advocate for um, our small business and all of you at, at your businesses that are anchored here in Puyallup and Sumner. And also, um, you know, I, I bring a unique um, perspective, I think, to the council because I've worked at every level of government, although I'm in the private sector now and I actually do government relations for a health insurance company here in the state of Washington, um, I understand how government works. And so I think that provides a great opportunity for the council and for the city to really engage with different leaders um, at different uh, levels of government in a way perhaps that we haven't before. So um, I look forward to having that conversation and, and offering any expertise that I can and really starting and building upon um, elevating Puyallup and all the good stuff that's going on here. Great. We're lucky to have you. Thanks, Tara. You bet. Okay, folks, Any anything else? Any other news to report or questions for anyone? Well, with that, I will extend uh, an invitation to you to our Forks and Corks on Friday at Farm 12, uh, where we've carefully curated wine pairings with elevated courses throughout the evening, live music. Um, the wines that are featured are exclusive wines, um, some from our local Puyallup Damon Heward of Passing Time and Sydney Rice, former Seahawks player, has dossier wine that'll be featured. And then on Saturday is the Great Grape Taste. So just a great sipping and winemaker kind of fun event um, at Pioneer Pavilion. So two great events that'll round out our culinary classic. Uh, you can learn more about it. We were featured on uh, New Day Northwest last week. Uh, and then culinaryclassicwa.com has more information if you're interested. But hey, great to see all of you this week. Um, I, uh, yeah, hope you have a, a wonderful rest of your week and thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you. You bet.